on December 14, 1991, Desmond Howard became only the third wide receiver to win the Heisman Trophy after Tim Brown in 1987 and Johnny Rogers in 1972. It would not be until 30 years later that another wide receiver would win the award. With 1,856 receiving yards on 117 catches with a total of 24 touchdowns, Devontae Smith's Heisman campaign was a wide receiver's dream, but the road to prosperity was not necessarily an easy one. So let's start from the beginning. For the end zone, Devontae Smith. So acrobatic. Alabama wins! Devontae Smith was born in the meat city of Louisiana, where he was raised by Kevin Dickerson and Christina Smith Seal. The small town of a meat city of Louisiana was home to less than 4,500 people, located about one hour from Baton Rouge and around two hours from New Orleans. Devontae Smith attended a meat high manic school where he played both basketball and football, and at the time, Smith was around six foot tall and only 150 pounds. There are stories of him doing at least 10 push ups each and every time he saw himself in the mirror and at least 100 before football practice or workouts would even start. He would usually say something like, coach, I'm just trying to get bigger, trying to get stronger, which are just some of the things to start wide out would tell his head coach Zephaniah Powell. The bell rings and I'm standing in the middle of the hallway, you know, and he's coming out of his classroom and immediately, you know, he's, he drops down and he starts doing push-ups and I see all the kids getting out of the way. I was like, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm running up to the scene and trying to figure out what's going on. And I see him doing push-ups and he gets up. I say, Devontae, what are you doing? He said, coach, I'm trying to get bigger. I say, well, you know, we, we lift weights, you know, seventh hour. He was like, coach, that's that's not enough. So what I do is, is every time I see myself in the mirror, some type of reflection, if it's in a water puddle, or whatever, I stop down and I do push-ups. And I believe that a lot of this could be due to the fact that throughout his teenage years, Smith was told that he could not be a football player due to his small stature. Doing what, 100 push-ups a day? Yeah. Before practice? Just throughout the day, I, I'd be in class and just drop down and do something. Why was that? Just trying to get bigger, just knowing that everybody looked at me like, oh, he's small, so it was just like, doing some push-ups here and there, it, it's not gonna hurt you. But that did not deter Devontae Smith at all. His work ethic and determination was always top tier. Always at the front of the line in drills, Devontae Smith did his best to make progress each and every day, mastering each football drill and running each route better and better every time. However, there was a time when Devontae Smith almost quit the game of football entirely. During his sophomore high school football season, he broke his collarbone in an early season practice. Practice. He had this to say about the injury and why he almost quit football. You quit football in high school when you broke your collarbone. Just explain that story. I, I read some, but I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. So everybody in my family played basketball. Everybody, me and my grandfather was the only two that played football and my younger brother and I. So, you know, I love hooping. That's what I grew up on. That's me, like, to, still to this day, if I had to choose one, I'm going to choose basketball. So got out there. Walk through, I'm just jogging, fell, landed on my shoulder, broke my collarbone. And uh, I just told him straight up, like, I quit. My mom and pops didn't want me to play football at that point. They weren't really bought into it then. They was like, we still want you to play basketball. So they was with me. So I was like, I quit. I ain't coming back. So Coach Foster, who my cousin, him and my pops, stay right by each other. Right. So every summer I go, my pops stay with him. Every day he came knocking on the door. Homeboy, homeboy, come on, it's time to go to practice. And I had no choice. Like, Pops used to make me, like, go. So I just used to end up going back to football and I just got back into it. But I definitely had quit and said I wasn't coming back. Definitely. <laughs> With the help of Coach Foster and others, such as his barber and longtime mentor, Vincent Sanders, who was able to be a voice of reason for Smith's frustration after his 2014 injury. And now I want to share what Mr. Sanders said to Devontae Smith. I told him, you're young. We're going to put mass on you. You're going to be okay. But at the end of the day, it's your call. Sanders recalled this week, we just went over the pros and the cons. I just basically told him, you're gifted, bro. There's something you got in you that other people don't have. You're young. 
you're starting, you're maneuvering around five-star defensive backs like they're in kindergarten. You're gifted at this. Now, I don't know about that adding mass part because Devontae Smith is still more of a slim reaper, but when Vincent Sanders said he made everything look easy, he was not lying at all. On top of Mr. Vincent's plea to help Devontae Smith continue to play football, his head coach, Mr. Powell, also did his part in helping change Devontae Smith's mind by telling him we're going to throw the ball on every play. But before we do that, don't forget to like, comment, and also subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, I don't know which tactic was more influential in this decision, but what I do know is it was one of the best decisions that Devontae Smith could have ever made. He continued to be a three-sport athlete throughout high school, playing both basketball and football. He was also a part of the track and field team, competing in the 100 and the 200 as a senior. He played both ways at wide receiver cornerback and safety as a senior helping the mic to a Louisiana 3A state runner up finish he also earned 3A first team all state honors at wide receiver from the Louisiana Sports Writers Association racking up roughly 900 yards on 13 touchdowns his junior year then following up that season going for over 1,000 yards his senior year with 67 receptions field 24 7 sport and I'm not sure if these stats are exactly what he had but but those are the ones that I can find online. At this point though, he was ranked as the number one wide receiver in the state of Louisiana and the number three overall wide receiver in the country by 24 seven sports. He had already proved that he could dominate on the high school level, even with his small frame. And now it was time to take his talents to the next level. I've been taking my talents to the University of Alabama. <laughs> Dante Smith's freshman year at Alabama would not include a large amount of action. He appeared in eight games, and in those eight games, he totaled eight receptions, 160 yards, and three touchdowns. However, even though this was the case, this was the same year he caught one of the biggest catches in Alabama history. This would be a play that would be forever cemented in Alabama history and without even getting into all of the backstory and all of the history around that particular play, a star within the Alabama Crimson Tide was born with a memory that would not be forgotten. But even with a catch that won the Alabama Crimson Tide a national championship, everything remained the same for Devontae Smith. I think your life's going to be different now after catching that touchdown. I'm going to live the same life that I've been living. I'm How did that play change your life? Um. It didn't change much. I mean, still the same me. I feel like people really didn't notice me until like my junior year. So like, I was still kind of like under the radar still. And speaking of the following year, his sophomore season, he would go on to have 693 receiving yards on 42 receptions with six touchdowns. Not anything crazy, but an improvement overall from his freshman year. But like Devontae Smith said, his junior year is when he began to see everything change. During his junior year, he would take yet another jump recording 1,256 receiving yards on 68 receptions with 14 touchdowns. And the game that many remember is his game against Ole Miss. On September 28th, Smith set a career high with 274 yards and five touchdowns in a 59-31 victory against the Rebels. Smith led the Crimson Tide in receiving yards and receiving touchdowns and probably could have elected to enter the NFL draft if he would have wanted to, but he decided to return to Alabama for his senior year. Teammates Henry Ruggs and Jerry Judy decided to enter the draft where they were first round picks. The decision to return to Alabama for one more year turned out to be a great decision as the following year would be a record-breaking year far beyond many thought were possible. With Henry Ruggs and Jerry Judy now in the NFL, the Alabama Crimson Tide will feature a duo of Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle. Both Smith and Waddle will start the season out strong with insane numbers through the first four games of the season. Smith going for 89 yards on eight receptions at Missouri, 63 on six against Texas A&M, 164 on 13 against Mississippi State, and 167 on 11 against Georgia. And those numbers are usually something you see one receiver on a team put up. Alabama 
Alabama had two. Jalen Waller threw four games with post numbers of 134 yards on eight receptions at Missouri, 142 on just five against Texas A&M, 120 on six against Mississippi State, and an insane number of 161 on just six against Georgia. And as you can imagine, a number of these games were not even close. The two-headed monster of Waddle and Devontae Smith was too much for opposing defense to handle. And it also helps that Alabama was pretty good on the defensive side of the ball as well, giving up only 20 or more points four times that season in a 13-game All-SEC schedule, Alabama was looking unstoppable. But an unfortunate injury did strike within the star wide receiving core in the fifth game of the season against Tennessee. On October 24, 2020, Jalen Waddle broke his right ankle when he was tackled while returning the opening kickoff in a game against Tennessee. But Waddle would return for the national championship game against Ohio State. And we're going to touch on that later in the video. However, you would think that with the loss of Waddle, teams can now focus more of their attention on Devontae Smith and attempt to limit his production. Well, the opposite happened. Devontae Smith's workload increased, and it almost seems to me now more than ever that the man was just always open. Now, in his first game without Waddle, some without watching it would have thought that the opposing team, Tennessee, figured something out. Smith had seven receptions for 73 yards, still pretty good by anyone else's standards, but if you go back and watch that game, there was no need for Smith to do a lot. John Mechie would have an amazing game with Waddle being out, going for 151 yards receiving on seven receptions. Najee Harris rushed for 96 yards and had three rushing touchdowns. But then Smith would have less than 130 receiving yards in a game only one more time that season in a game against Arkansas. But with that being said, in that game against Arkansas, you did have this big play by Smith in the first quarter. Devontae Smith with a cutback, finds an alley right up the center of the kick coverage group for the Razorbacks, and he will not. 11 games including the SEC Championship, Smith led the country with 98 receptions and 1,511 receiving yards, the most by any Heisman winner in either category, topping the previous record holder Desmond Howard 950 yards receiving on 61 receptions in 1991. Now I know the game has changed a lot since 1991 and so you do have to take that into account. Other Heisman finalists included Trevor Lawrence, Mac Jones, and Kyle Trapp. Devontae Smith posted four games with 11 or more receptions, including a career best and SEC title game record 15 against Florida, 13 at Ole Miss, and 11 each against Georgia and Mississippi State. He recorded seven games with over 100 yards receiving, all with at least 144 yards, including 231 yards on eight catches at LSU, 203 against the Bulldogs, which included a season high four touchdowns, and a 184 yards against the Gators. This would set the stage for the fourth wide receiver in the history of college football to win the Heisman and the first since Michigan's Desmond Howard. The 2020 winner of the Heisman Trophy is Devontae Smith. It is now over. <laughs> The playoffs would roll around and in the first game against Notre Dame, Devontae Smith would have 130 receiving yards with seven receptions and three touchdowns. But his most impressive playoff game and in my opinion, the most impressive game of his college career would come in the next game against Ohio State in what I would say is the greatest half of football by a wide receiver that I have ever seen. He had 215 receiving yards on 12 catches without finishing the entire game. Unfortunately, he would break his hand on the second play of the second half somehow some way he was always open and i do not believe that was going to slow down anytime soon had it not been for this injury smith may have gone easily for over 300 yards in this championship game and oh remember that guy jalen waddle he came back off of a broken ankle you have to commend the fact that he was able to and alabama offensive coordinator at the time steve sarkeesian did a great job in managing his route so he wouldn't get hit Many thought that playing was a horrible idea, but he did it, and he made it, and he fought through it. Do you believe you'd have been able to put up the numbers had Waddle stayed healthy? No, I know I wouldn't have. But I mean, like, I believe both of us would have had great seasons. Right. But it was like, you can't 
if you double one, the other one going to eat. Smith was named offensive MVP of that championship game with an addition of the playoff. Smith ended his college season with 1,856 receiving yards on 117 catches with 24 total touchdowns. He would end his college career with 234 receptions, 3,961 receiving yards, and 46 touchdowns, and would go on to get drafted by the Eagles 10th overall. And so far through three seasons, he would already have two 1,000 yard receiving seasons, just coming shy of that his rookie year by around 100 yards or so. He would hold records in college, such as first in Alabama single game receiving yards with 274, first in national championship game single game receiving touchdowns with three, first in SEC career receiving touchdowns with 46. Accolades such as Heisman Trophy winner, of course, unanimous first team All-American and SEC Offensive Player of the Year in 2020, just to name a few. Devontae Smith may have been on the smaller side in terms of frame, but having capped off the greatest college football season for a wide receiver, many can and have made the argument that he might just be the greatest wide receiver in college football history.